Hi. Welcome to our tips and tricks webcast on IBM Cognos TM1. Today's chapter. How to feed data from small to large cube. A multinational company is using TM1 to monitor their performance. As the TM1 solution is common across the globe, the cubes have redundant elements across dimensions. Here, the solution captures common cost of production in single cube. The dimension in the cube are versions, subsidiaries, months, cost GLs, and measures. In this cube you can easily notice that each subsidiary have cost for very less numbers of cost GLs. After suppress zero, you can find only 20% cost GLs have values. Now the company is manufacturing multiple products. The common cost needs to be allocated product wise. In product wise cost cube. All other dimensions remain same. Except product's dimension. Which means. The cost of production has to be allocated to products based on production. Also have a look on the subsidiary wise production view. Which is actually a slice of the product wise cost cube. Now let's write a rule to allocate cost of production. We also have to write comments in rule file to have better maintainability of solution. With this rule, the cost of each GL will spread based on production. First, let's disable skip check and check if the rule is working fine. The both the views are being kept side by side to showcase pre and post allocated cost of production. The GL wise cost is getting perfectly allocated for each subsidiary. Now let's again enable skip checks and write feeders conventionally. The allocated cost can be fed by either production or cost. Let's try both the methods. Method 1. Fed allocated cost from production. In this scenario, production will fed the total cost of production. The TM1 rule scripts in this scenario, will look like this. Method 2. Fed, allocated cost, from cost of production. In this scenario, the cost of production will fed, total of, the products. As per this method, the feeder has to be written in, cost of production cube. Now, let's get a little visibility on back-end mechanism. And each version layer of the cost of production cube have approximately 1800 leaf level cells. Out of which, only 540 cells have data. Which means the cube is 71% sparse. On another side the subsidiary production view has approximately 1600 leaf level cells out of which only 291 cells have data which is resulting in 82% sparsity and finally the product wise cost view has approximately 41000 leaf cells also this particular view doesn't has any input values so now see by using method 1 Subsidiary production is feeding approximately 7500 cells, a roughly feeding of around 19% cells of the view. And, by using method 2, 
cost of production is feeding approximately 12,000 cells. A feeding of around 29% cells. If we compare both the methods side by side, both production and cost are feeding allocated cost cube. But when we checked the actual non-zero cells in allocated cost cube, we found that only 6% cells have values. It means, system is feeding 3 times more cells using method 1. And 5 times more cells using method 2. In summary, system is overfeeding allocated cost cube in both the scenario which may drastically downgrade the performance. Let's understand how we can optimize feeding using conditional feeders. Same time we also have to ensure a balance between performance optimization and solution maintenance. In this scenario, let's see our recommendation to optimize performance. As we mentioned earlier, Due to the dimensional structure, system has redundant elements across dimensions. Here each subsidiary is producing a particular set of products only. It gives us an opportunity to optimize performance by feeding products which is specific to individual subsidiary only. To configure this, maintain active products in a product master cube. This cube can be controlled by system data administrator. And then create a turbo integrator process to automatically update the subsidiary wise product subtotals. This TIE will append the subtotals in existing products dimension. As system may have historical data, we recommend to execute this TIE, always in update mode. After executing TIE, the product dimension will have subtotal, prefix with FE. Now let's modify the feeder written in, cost of production rule file using method 2. Here instead of feeding total product, instruct system to feed products, conditionally. Just recollect the method 2 mechanism and see how the feeding gets optimized here. Now the individual subsidiaries are feeding products which they are belong to. And controlling the feeding precisely to exact 6.03%. Thanks for watching our tips and tricks webcast. We believe you found it interesting and gained value out of this. For any feedback or query, please do write us at info at Thank you.